And now, live from Hollywood, California, all the way from Smoke, Sylvania, it's the Count Smokula Show. I like rap. She likes rap, so the Bring out the map. Let's find some harmony. Relax. There's no place to go. Come to, to the, the Count, Count Smokula Show. That's right, you heard our little theme song, and welcome to our humble little show. I'm Count Smokula, your host. This, of course, the spectacular Susie, yeah, the co-host. We've got a show today that is so sizzling with the heat, you wouldn't believe it in your wildest dreams. You could take a piece of meat and put it in front of the television screen, and by the time this show is over, that meat would be cooked. Well done, even. Susie, how was the volleyball this week? You know, of course, those of you who have watched the show all the time, that the spectacular Susie is the world's greatest volleyball player and was actually in tournaments. Ah. Did you win? I think he's fascinated with me playing volleyball. I think it's great. It must be the nails. He doesn't think I really play because I have long nails. I've seen her on the beach jumping up and down with the other girls and boys. The How tomatoes about, uh, is what he calls us, the tomatoes. But uh, I can't say this uh, too much because it's not totally PC. And we have to be PC because we're living in the 90s. We have to be with it. But uh, you, you did play this week, and I know you did very well. Lost two correct? nails. We did lost great. two nails. But how, how was the game? Oh, I won every you, game. You won the game. Yeah. This is great. Yeah. And you know why she won? Because we're all cheering for the spectacular Susie. And the, what's the name of the team? She was frustrated. That's why she won. So frustrated. What's mm -hmm. this frustration? I'm not frustrated anymore. I'm in a good mood. Oh, because you, you, you played the game. Yeah. and this Because the physical exercise is very important for your health and well-being, right? You two out there. So you're livable. That's right. You mm -hmm. could be physically active, and you may turn out looking like the spectacular Susie. I'm trying, but it's not working. I'm. Uh, still he doesn't play volleyball. <laughs> no, I don't play volleyball. But I was a cowboy for a while. I was uh, roping the cows. This is right. I was out in East Texas roping the cows, uh, slinging the guns. And tanning the hides. Unfortunately, the my hide did not get to tan. It was a genetic problem. I didn't wear the right jeans. Anyway, on, on with the show. Let's get it going. We have some incredible guests today. I'm going to tell you about them a little later. We have the Angelina Joy Emmanuel. Can you believe it? They're one of the greatest dancers in the entire world. And Al Bowman, huh? who you would not believe this man. He's a media researcher and a real journalist. He writes. You know, you know, I tried to write. I got my pen. Can you see this? This was This filled. is a pen. This, this is a, a beautiful pen. pen. This pen, I got this in Smoke, Sylvania. It's filled with my what favorite, the beets. This is what I like to drink, and we put it in the pen to write with the beet ink. This is why this, every time I write, it becomes beatnik poetry. You wouldn't believe it. Okay, Susie. Let's get right down to business because I know the folks didn't turn in to just uh, idolize their time. Have a little they, affirmation? That's maybe? right. They came yeah. here for enlightenment, for knowledge, and for little great count, entertainment. Knowledge. That's right. Let's mm -hmm. get right away to Count Smokula's major affirmations, which today 
You can help me at home and in the studio audience. Let's see. What? This see. is something that my mother told me back in Smokesylvania. She said, Ew. she said, she says, Let's count. See. She says, you, if you don't behave, you're going to be in big trouble. So I said, it would be better. Well, we're losing things. It would be better to behave badly than not to behave at all. Let's say it with me, please. Everybody in. It, it would, would be, be better, better to behave, behave badly than, than not to behave, behave at, at all. all. Okay, Yay. let's see what happens when you behave badly. <laughs> the next one, the, do you see the piece of paper someplace? There it is. Right here, you can get right down to it. You get fun and pleasures is exchanged from... So this from is behaving this, badly, that's right? When you uh, behave that's what badly. your mother told okay. That's right. okay. Okay. I think. I, she didn't tell me to do this. She okay. just said, you better behave or else. Okay. We'll try. Now, Susie, I know you're really anxious to do this. You've got the intellectual part of the show covered with a film review. This huh. is spectacular Susie's... Savvy. See, savvy screenings. screenings. That's right. Okay. What's, what's the movie today? Volcano. Volcano. Let's for, hear it. For everybody who loves Tommy Lee Jones, Flying Fire, and Bubbly Goo, you're going to love this movie. And for all the rest of us, yawn, the love interest was a little bit flat. And it was just another disaster film. Sorry, guys. I've seen a million of them. That's two thumbs in the... Well, for Flying Goo, it's this, flying and goo, for all up. the rest of it, it's just... Okay, that's bad. Okay. Mm -hmm. now, I like Tommy Lee Jones. Tommy Lee. He's, he's cool. Yeah, he's, he's cool. cool. He's cool. really hip. Okay, mm -hmm. now let's get into the next phase of our program. The Bible. I'm reading from the Bible. The Weekly the World News. News. This is the absolute truth. You read this in the supermarkets, and I know it's he true. He because they it. wrote it. This is a story, and I was very moved by this, because we have an actual alien on the show today. Somebody all the way from down under, from Australia, and I'm afraid maybe she's one of the Roswell aliens that's returning to pick up the dead comrades. That was destroyed in 1947 in New Mexico. Does this the interest me? Susie, you're not in a great mood today. <laughs> I, think, I think something's bothering you. I don't know what it is. And also, the, the fact is, that I wanted to discuss this with a, a little later when she comes up. That's the uh, Angelina Joy Emanuel, because she's from Australia. I read this uh -huh. thing in the Weekly Royal News. It says, a stupid teacher keeps his job. This happened in Sydney, Australia. You wouldn't believe it. A school teacher named Andrew Sweety, he retained his job after a public hearing, despite the fact he cannot spell, solve elementary math problems, or pass a fourth grade writing test. Sounds like the Los Angeles school district. <laughs> The school board ruled that the high school science teacher's incredibly low skill level should have been picked up when he was hired seven years ago and that to fire him now would be unjust. Okay, we're running from they the have time. A we'll point. have to you discuss this. Do you think Angelique will be happy with this? I don't know, but she went to school in Australia. Maybe she actually studied with this teacher who can't write. We'll have to ask her if she can write and read. Bathroom. She's a very bright girl. Maybe she taught him something. I don't know. Okay, we got a little bit of time. Do we have enough time to do this, uh, this thing? Because I had a product uh, to show everybody that you wouldn't believe it. You would not believe it. This was the traditional... The scientist. Here we go. This is a product, the traditional... Folk remedies of smoke. But we really don't have time for this now, do we? Well, maybe we do. Okay, the traditional folk remedies, because a lot of times nowadays people want to find cures from the nature. Okay? Yes, that's right. So Holistic I'll give medicine. you a, a couple of examples. Like that, a couple of examples. Mm -hmm. Let's say, first of all, this is for earaches. You mm -hmm. have earaches, you'll get the earvax, the earvax, and this is something in Smokesylvania, you just Whack on the ear and just cures it. You'll get bubbling goo. Se several <laughs> bubbling goo. I'm going to run a little long. Are we really, ru we are really running from the time on this? Well, but maybe we I'll should see a little guesting. Should we see? Should we see? Okay. Let's just forget this whole business. We'll do it another time. Well, on, on with the show. We got the first guest. Let's bring her on. I want to tell you, this guest is one of the most incredible singers, dancers, talented, jump around people that you've ever seen in, in the Hollywood in the California. She comes all the way from down under, down under what? I'm not quite sure. We'll find out a little bit later. She's going to make it She's really got big. Legs. She got the legs and great reviews, and everybody loves her. Let's see the clip of Angelina Joy Emanuel right here. Three, two.
This is the great, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, the great Angelina Joy Emanuel. Yeah. Right here. Angelina. Once again. Thank okay, you. Listen to what they write. They call this girl the single girl. Why? She can't get a husband. I don't know. She belts out original catchy dance, high energy, radio friendly pop music. She's got noteworthy vocal abilities, which were a bit above the norm of many of the dance pop divas. She's a great, great entertainer. And she came here to make it in the Hollywood of the California. Angelina. Darling, I got some questions for you. Number one, mm -hmm. your songs, everything, so happy all the time. How you manage to stay so happy in spite of all the heartbreak of the Hollywood? I guess it's my therapy. It keeps me going. The, 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 your therapist? Mm -hmm. I'm, my, I'm my <laughs> therapist. Yeah, is that I right? just write when I get down, and it motivates me to keep going. So, so you, you're performing all the time? Mm -hmm, pretty where, much. Where are you playing? Well, actually, um, I have a regular gig at the White Horse Inn Wednesday nights in Hollywood, every Wednesday at 9.30. But I've, um, I'm doing Goldfingers tonight, actually. That's this Goldfingers. They, by, by the time it's the show... It's a cute little yeah, club yeah. in Hollywood. It's a cute little club. But I should be getting a regular spot there, too. Oh, this is great. So mm -hmm. all over the town, you're performing, you're dancing, and singing, and you write your own music. Doing what I love, loving what I do. That's right. I guess and I you work with the children, too, right? Yeah, I have my own dance school. The joy of dance. And what you do with the kids? I teach children to dream and believe in themselves. Now that's the therapy. That's mm -hmm. great That's therapy. it right there. Because yeah. the children is, is the future of the world. That's right. That's mm -hmm. right. And we're all in a children in, in our yeah. inner selves. Well, that's right. dance at your school? <laughs> that's yeah. right. We, we, I teach we, adults we, too. Oh. Yeah. We'll we be the kids. Go, we could go and dance around. This would mm -hmm. be great. Now, let me ask you this. He liked that last Because Angelina is a real space alien. What do you, what you think about this guy from Australia? 
Well, my teachers weren't like that. They weren't. They, they knew how to eat and write. They certainly did. Put her on the spot, Cal. What let are you doing you, to her? Let, now, let me ask you this. What was like, life like down under? I was blessed. I had a beautiful childhood. I had a great school, great friends, great Kangaroos. parents. Well, tell the, they tell the Americans, but... but I went to Scotch College, so I was lucky. I went to a great school, and I was at that school for 12 years, so... Did you like some liquid lunch? It was lunch? like my second home. This is uh, what we got in Scotch College. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, okay. No. So, so what's it like, uh, the difference between... <laughs> this is Cal Smokula's liquid lunch, product oh, of Smokesylvania, Greps mm -hmm. Brothers, and Schmeckel Company. Mm -hmm. Okay. What was like life like real quick, because they're running okay, from yeah, the time. we got to bring on the... Well, that's what's, um, I guess, inspired me to teach children here because I think um, I don't think children get enough of the arts and most of them are growing up in little cheap apartment buildings and that's what's driven me to find a way to survive and you know give to the kids so comparing to my life that's what I'm trying to say. This is one noble cause we're gonna talk to you a little bit later but we're gonna bring on right now we have a man he's a media researcher He's a journalist. He ran for the vice president of the United States of America. And he's got so many stories. He's also there. We call him Dolly because he started the Los Angeles Music Awards. The Lama, so he's like the Dolly Lama, Lama, the high priest. Let's see a clip right now of the great Al Bowman running for vice president of the United States on that other talk show, the Jerry Springer Show. Well, we can Thank you, Jerry. We can, we can show The it. competition? Thanks, and Jerry, yes. go. Well, we use marijuana to worship God, and I've been an advocate of changing the government for years, and I've always advocated nonviolent revolution, but now that I've turned 35 years old, I thought it was time to run for president. You have a running mate, right? I do. And he's pretty well known. He was O.J. Simpson's former limo driver. What I'm trying to do is no different than Marsha Clark, Johnny Cochran, and any of those other people. We're trying to use the O.J. Simpson case to ride it all the way to the White House. Let's meet your uh, vice presidential candidate. Now, he was just selected by you. He didn't win at any convention or anything. No, but I noticed that after I selected him, Jerry, Bob Dole selected Jack Kemp, who was O.J. Simpson's first quarterback in the NFL. So he took my lead. <laughs> I don't know if you know this, but Bill Clinton golfed with O.J. about two months before the murder, so he has an O.J. connection, too. Okay. <laughs> Here we go, your vice presidential candidate, Al the Limo Driver. Well, thank you very much, uh, fellow American citizens. Let me just say that I spent 10 years as a limousine driver in Los Angeles, and the limousine to me represents the American dream. And for 10 years, I let 7,000 different people experience a little piece of that dream. And as Reverend Bud Green's vice president, I will push a federal mandate, making it a requirement that every American citizen gets a limousine in their own driveway. <laughs> entitled to a piece of that American dream and the limousine is the last bastion of freedom left on the American roadway now think about this it's the last 100% American made automobile the limousine to me represents freedom and freedom is America thank you We're getting ready to take a break now. Uh, you know, in fairness, you're entitled to equal time on, on American television as well as the other candidates. We certainly, well, I don't want to say I wish you luck, uh, but... I told you this was going to be a controversial show, <laughs> and it was, because we got right here, Mr. Al Bowman. Al, welcome here. Oh, thank you at all. Thank you. Welcome. This is a politician welcome. beyond belief. Uh, Vice President, did, Al, did you win the election? Well, on the show, we won the election. You won the election on <laughs> the Against a transvestite and a cross-dressing <laughs> punk rock candidate. Well, we can't have those people running for president. I mean, we hey, can I, have them running, but winning, Forget I don't the know. limo. I want the limousine driver and the limo. Oh, okay. Al Bowman, <laughs> that's right. Al Bowman is known as Al the limo driver. Actually, Al the limo man. Man, Al the limo man. Why is this Al? Uh, from 82 to 92 I drove and I was part owner of a company and um, 
I just became known as the limo man because we supplied limos for so many different people and so many different events and occasions. And it turned out later that uh, the limo man in terms of you know, the mob is the guy who drives the dead guy in the trunk. Now, I did not know this, but if you see the movie Goodfellas, they kill a guy at a card game and Robert De Niro tells Joe Pesci, call the limo man and get this guy out of here, he says. And the limo man in the mob world is the guy who drives the dead guy. I didn't know this. I, I thought it meant limo you. supplier, you know. But like, you're called uh, Al the limo driver now. Well, I actually, call it, it's, it's, it's actually Al the limo man. man. So the limo, the limo man. man. And a lot of times I'd meet people and they'd go, so you're the limo man, huh? And they'd have this fear. And I'd say, nice yeah. to me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Nice. Look, but, but you don't know. Wanna, yeah. they, 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 they don't want to instill the people out there that feared our friends. Hello. <laughs> we want to show some of the people that was in the limo with Al the limo man. Right. Yeah. Right. We, we yeah, got we the pictures there. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. Ozzy Osbourne. <laughs> uh, Ozzy. I drove Ozzy for about uh, from 1983 until 88 when he came to town every year. After 88, he went into rehab and he's straightened himself out, lost a bunch of weight, quit drinking, quit doing drugs, which is amazing for him. Quit that doing limos. Uh, and so, you know, his need for having limos and those ostentatious things with the, the unlimited bar and all that sort of went with his uh, there went your job yeah Bye -bye. kind of with with Ozzy but I'm proud of him because he straightened himself out he still does use limo but he doesn't want any temptation of alcohol around him at all because he's, you know he wrote a That's song right. called Demon Alcohol which is one of his bigger hits there that he had this yeah. guy is like a walking Gossip Dictionary. <laughs> he go, knows go tell us oh, a little who's bit this? more okay, gossip. Who's okay, now that's more? Motley Crue, and for uh, from 1984 until 1987, I was like, kind of, I felt like a fifth member of the band. I drove them over 20 times, had some great, great adventures with them, uh, sort of James Bond kind of driving a lot of times after a concert. We'd be chased by maybe 20 to 30 cars trying to catch up to the limo. And these guys had unlimited power on the road. I mean, they could yeah, tell so. women, hey, show us your breasts. And, of course, the women would roll down the window and show us. They liked that. And, I mean, they could do anything they wanted. They, it, was really, it was really an amazing time. It really was. This was great. And you didn't even have to have a hair piece to fit in. You just fit. No, I just kind of, you know, was always there for them and got them whatever they needed at any hour it's of the day or night. men you know. behaving badly. That's yes. it. What else? We got another picture here. That's Mayor Bradley. Oh, uh, I'm sure he didn't do the same thing. Great right? story behind the mayor. Uh, took him to an event, the World uh, Boxing Hall of Fame ceremony uh, in 1983, uh, about a year after I started driving, and um, he was a, he was a great guy. I mean, I, I was it was an amazing time for me to, to be able to have the mayor in my car. And he should remember that he was a mayor, but you was almost a vice president. Well, yeah, that now the, the that was a weird thing. The way that happened was we just kind of BS our way on, like politicians do. And uh, we actually won the election on that show, but yeah, it, that show shows like what you can do if you really set your mind to it. Years ago, I had a dream that someday I would come out in front of a national TV audience and have this big crowd chanting my name, and, and they'd be playing Hail to the Chief as if I was the president. And I made that dream come true. And I did it. Okay, it was the Jerry <laughs> Springer show on cares? national. Thank but you hear Jerry oh, did say land. that he, Jerry, and he, this is a highlight of my personal life, was to hear Jerry say that I deserved equal time on national TV with the president. And that shows the greatness of America. That is how great this country my really is. Oh, now, okay. here's another thing. Okay, now that is where I use the Star Magazine in a dispute I had with my city over that tiny little dog. Um, they have a real strict leash law in Hermosa Beach, California. And uh, I, I play, was playing ball with my dog with uh, two other supervising adults, and the animal control was spying on us. And they waited for the chance to catch us, letting go of the leash, which we did, and then they swooped down and said, we were watching you, you let go of that leash, we're gonna have to cite you for the leash law. And I, uh, my whole point was, what, you don't think I can control this dog? This, is, you know, this dog is this big, you know? And I told the lady, I said, if you write me that ticket, because it's a $70 fine, for doing what I did, this terrible infraction, um, that I told her that I would embarrass the city worldwide if she wrote me that ticket. And I proved that a citizen in this country can use the media. It's more effective than going to your Better Business Bureau or your Labor Board or anywhere else. Take it to the media. If there's confrontation and controversy and, and name calling and there's some kind well, of did angle you have like to that. Pay the ticket? What ended up happening in the end, now, this is. We, we're living in a time right now where uh, the prosecutorial aspect of the judicial system is heavily favored. Uh -huh. The defendant, to be accused in America, really, is to really be convicted, because you can be accused of a crime for almost anything in America today. And, uh, and during my court sessions, I went to court four times on that ticket. And this, goes, this is just a minor dog ticket. You don't want to get swallowed up by the legal system. I almost did on this dumb dog ticket. The officer didn't show up on trial day, which was July 16th. The officer failed to show. 
at, the, at which point it should have been dismissed. The prosecutor asked for an unprecedented fifth extension on the thing, and I felt like at that point I could never get a fair trial because on a traffic ticket, if you're disputing a speeding yeah, ticket, and the cop there, doesn't show, yeah, 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 but they is, wouldn't release they a show, the, show the, the screwed, up, the screwed up American judicial system these days, really. I mean, if a prosecutor he, keep doing that, so you got to go. You got to go. You got to go to the media, right? I'm cutting you yeah. short because they're running a. That's the name of the game. Take it to the media, and they'll run your story, and you can, you know, you can. It's more effective than trying to sue somebody or calling the police or calling a better business. Perfect, perfect, Al. I love it. Now tell us, Al. This is important because we're taking it to the media, via the media. Okay. What is the LAMA, the Los Angeles Music Awards, and tell us a little about it. Well, the Los Angeles Music Awards was started in 1991 after a conversation I had with Bill Gazzari, who was known as the godfather of rock and roll. His club operated for 30 years on the Sunset Strip. About three days after we had this talk, he died of heart failure, 66 years old. And he urged me to start this show because he told me that nobody was really recognizing the value of unsigned artists in the marketplace. And of course, you know, people like Guitar Center and Budweiser and tobacco companies, they rely on unsigned artists as a very large segment of their marketplace. So I started the LA Music Awards. The first year we had 35 submissions. This year we have over 800 artists have put their material in for a possible nomination. And we're looking at December 15th at the Hollywood Palladium to have the show for all unsigned artists. Hey, oh, nearly 800, artists. yeah, unsigned oh, artists. Yeah, yeah. Trying to make it yeah. just, this is, this is a level just below the Grammys, just before they hit it big with their big record deal. So this that's is fabulous. Hoping. You'll catch them right Only before they take off. Like, for example, yeah. the Angelina Joy Emmanuel. Right this is in the Rock, Rock City, Rock News. City News. Al Bowman, the great reviewer in Page his three. reviewer three. capacity. Yeah. <clears> Page three. three. Page three. She had a write-up. I, I went and saw Angelina, and I can tell you, if you haven't seen her She's live good. show, a creamy fried diva, and she's yeah. just great, right? We got to talk voice. about that later. Hey because we are running from the time. We had so much enjoyed you being here. We want to thank our guest, Angelina Joy Emanuel. Ah. The great, the great singer ah. and dancer from Australia. The great Al Bowen. Thank you. Citizens activist, journalist, <laughs> media researcher, and vice president and of Canada. Walking. And walking. Gossip pictures. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> now pick thank up you. an instrument under your seat. You oh, got what? something? Oh, my We're going to ask you at home to pick up a pot of pan, whatever you got, your husband, your wife, and, and do the dance of joy <laughs> from Smokes of Bangu with us. Be happy to be next. We'll see you next time. <laughs> Smoke, 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 smoke,